It's getting way too cold to keep going outside, so we're gonna move inside, but first, quick break for some weenies. But there it is. Thousand songs. A thousand songs. <laughs> I mean, we gotta pick a winner anyways. Yeah, all right, I think we got it. All right, so a while back, me and Mitch were jamming and we talked about how we felt we didn't know enough about how to actually make good, interesting chord progressions. We've both got a few up our sleeves, usually from songs we've learned or maybe lessons way back in my conservatory days when I was deep into music theory. But it seems like a lot of that has just slipped from my brain over the last few years. That's when we came up with this idea. What if we learned a thousand different songs as quickly as humanly possible? we'd be bound to find tons of unique chord progressions. And what if from that, we tried to narrow it down to find one chord progression that stands out from all the others? Well, that's what we did. And in this video, we're gonna show you all the things you learn from going through a thousand chord progressions. We wanted to find the perfect progression. So although there are very many unique progressions out there, we tried to stick to more popular songs and find the hidden gems among them so we can ensure the unique chord progressions we find are still very listenable. We went through 70 years of music to do this, starting from 1960 all the way up to 2020. No, of course, we didn't actually learn these songs in full, but we did go through all of their progressions and select our favorite parts of the song if it happened to have multiple chord progressions. Throughout this video, we're gonna show you our top 11 progressions. We left their song names out in order to avoid having any bias when you pick your favorite. At the end, we'll reveal the winner and the song names of the nominees. And this is about chord progressions, not the songs themselves. So listen close, because I'm gonna ask you to leave a comment with your favorite at the end of the video. After going through the first couple hundred, we were all finding lots of interesting things about progressions and music in general. We noticed some common trends and errors of music. The 60s and early 70s, songs tended to use a lot more chords as opposed to the more common repeating chord progressions you see today. Bands like the Beatles would go on an entire verse without repeating a progression and could have about 15 chord changes during a single verse. From the mid 70s onwards, most songs stuck to around four chords. I guess musicians realized it was just way harder to remember more than that, especially when you have to remember a ton of songs to play an entire show. We also started to find some new chord shapes that were actually a lot more popular than we thought and could be added to our own playing, like the D major 7 or this F6 chord. Suspended 2 and 4 chords are also way more popular than I thought, and it's really cool where they're used. I also find out that in 1984, the Ghostbusters theme song was actually number one hit for three weeks straight. Something I really love about this progression and lots that I found during this process was the D major 7. <laughs> oh, is that ever spicy. And this chord progression, I found it worked best due to its following chord, the E minor. See, the D major 7 is a very top heavy chord, meaning it's played on the higher strings. And these notes really resonate. You pair this with an E minor chord that has got its notes on the lower strings and you get this almost jumpy bass line to melody feeling that I think sounds really good. It's also a really good strumming technique to switch your focus from higher notes to lower during your playing. All right, so we've been through about 300 songs now. We found lots of nice chord progressions, but really only two that have actually stood out as particularly unique. Clearly, we gotta try something different. 
So far we've just been picking ones that sound good because sounding good is the most important part of music. But that's really subjective and there's probably a lot more to it that we should be thinking about. Like something to do with music theory because music theory does really help to bring songs together. So maybe we'll try that out. What we really need is more knowledge. What makes a good chord progression? What makes a chord sound good? What are we even looking for? Here's what we found. The number one thing that makes a progression beautiful is building up the right amount of tension that needs to be resolved. Basically what this means is that by selecting the right chords, you can lead your progression in a direction to tell a story. And this direction in most situations would be leading to the one chord, which is the key that you're in. The more you can build this tension, the better that final chord will feel. The fifth chord in the key tends to do this quite well, which makes it a great chord to end your progression on. But there's more to that progression than just tension. To make something that stands out, you need spice in your progressions. Unique chords and chord voicings can do so much to help fix a boring chord progression. Learning new chords was one of the best things that came out of this experiment. Some useful ones we found to look into more can be your sus2 and sus4 chords, dominant 7th, minor and major 7th, and add 9 and add 11. Learning how to use these can add a lot of interest and intrigue to your progressions. We've got all these chord shapes laid out for you in the bonus package for this video that you can get by becoming a patron. Link in the description. And finally, it's a little more advanced, but the most useful way i found to make chords that fit really well together is to give the cho- I think I got one. Oh, oh no way. Oh, sweet. All right, one sec. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So the most useful way that I've found to make chords that fit really well together is to choose chord voicings that give a smooth flow between them, primarily the bass line and the top line, i.e. the highest notes in the chord. More on that later. With some new information under our belts, we had some hopes that this would move along a little faster. And to our surprise, and our brilliance, we quickly found progression number four. The coolest thing I found about this one is not actually the chords themselves, but how they're played. The chords we got here are just E minor, C, G, and then the only different one, D add 11, which is really cool. And obviously they're moved up four steps. The cool part is this melodic motion that we get through playing these different chords in the right voicings. Start with a really hard stroke on these bottom two strings of that E minor for the rock power chord feel, and then strumming on mostly just the higher strings there. And then each chord gets progressively higher. So we switch the C, and then we move the G, and we move up even higher. And then that D add nine, or add 11, we play all the way up here. So you get this. Which moves all the way up, and then you start again really low with those low notes on the E minor chord to start off again and give you that strong start. So these chords flow really well together based on the voicings chosen and not necessarily the chords themselves. It's getting way too cold to keep going outside, so we're gonna move inside, but first, quick break for some weenies. Hey, got one. Hey, nice. <laughs> Sweet. 
so we hoped that with our new information, we'd be able to spot out all of the good chord progressions a little easier. But even though our knowledge of chord progressions was scarce before, it became apparent that that wasn't really the problem. Maybe our system wasn't the right way to approach this. There's so much more that goes into a progression than just the chord names. We needed context. We need to find out what voicings these songs are using, and we needed to research outside of just the number one hits. And when we noticed that players like Jimi Hendrix, Jimmy Page, John Mayer, Bob Dylan, and Bruce Springsteen were nowhere to be seen on the list, we wondered how many good progressions were out there that we just weren't finding. So we changed our approach. We started to look at great musicians and find their best progressions. We looked deeper into other musical genres, looking for those wacky chords that genres like jazz bring you. We spent a lot of time browsing through forums of players like you who gave recommendations of their favorite progressions that they've found. Finally, we found an approach that was successful. After searching through about 200 more songs this way, we found tons of interesting progressions and narrowed it down to the ones that stood out the most. So there are a few really, really interesting parts to this chord progression. This entire chord progression is centered along this D, which is the fifth degree of the scale if we're playing in G major. To combine with that, the E with the minor seven, the D, and the C with the add nine, all have a D in them, which makes all these chords really revolve around that fifth degree of the scale or the D. And that's what gives it this very, very bright summary sound. And when you combine it with bringing it up four frets on this capo here, just to make it a little bit higher, it's a very perfect summertime kind of chord progression. Now the icing on the cake for this one is the fact that the most common chord progression is the one, four, five, six. In this case it would be G, E minor, C, D. But the one thing that this chord progression doesn't give you is that one. And as we know, the fifth degree really wants to resolve to the one. You get this this full resolution here, but because we never get that one chord, it feels like this chord progression could go on forever. And that's a perfect example of this tension, but you don't get that release, so that's what makes this progression so catchy and you just wanna play it on repeat. This is a very simple trick you can use easily in your playing. Any sus chord that you play will always want to resolve into its normal major chord. So basically you can take the chord that you're planning on ending your progression on and try to throw a sus chord in right before it. More often than not, this will make the final chord in your progression so much nicer to listen to. Finally, we found some things that we were really excited to show you, and we found ourselves a decent sized list to select a winner from. But first, we had a goal in mind. So let's get that 100 over with and back to the list. Oh shit. 
Oh, they found him. Ready? You take the last one. I got the last one loaded up right here. <laughs> Classic. <sighs> All right, here we go. Last one. Not ending on a unique, strong, or memorable note. Nice. But there it is. Thousand songs. Thousand songs. <laughs> oh. Woo! Right. <laughs> nice. Oh. What's over? Oh, there you go. That was so long. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, let's call it a day. Let's not do that again. Ever. <laughs> All right, here we have it. The top 10 most interesting progressions we could find. Right now, I want you to pause this video and post in the comments which progression is your favorite. In just a moment, we're gonna reveal what songs these are from and our personal favorite from this list. So here are the names of the songs we found these progressions from. Hopefully you didn't pick one you hate. If you did, maybe you found a reason to listen to that song again and give it another chance. I know I was really surprised by some of the songs I thought had the most interesting chords. Now, obviously this is a completely subjective opinion. These are all great progressions. But in the end, we just had to listen and decide which one we thought sounded the best. Yeah, I think this is pretty good. I mean, we gotta pick a winner anyways. Yeah, all right, I think we got it. Okay, so there's the one we picked as the perfect chord progression. Now, obviously the real biggest thing we learned from this experiment is there's no such thing as the perfect chord progression. It just as easily could have been any of the other ones that we looked at here. We just had to pick one because we said we were going to at the beginning of this video. So now I'll hand it over to you. What do you think? Do you agree with our choice? Would you have picked a different one? Let me know in the comments below which one you would have picked and why. And to end off, I just want to let you know that this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an awesome website for anyone who loves learning new things online. It's got tons of different inspiring classes for a ton of creative topics like design, photography, video production, music production, and guitar. It's full of tons of awesome guitar classes for you to learn guitar faster. Millions of people are already using Skillshare and seeing success with their new skills, and you can join that community of millions for less than $10 a month if you get their annual subscription. It's a really great way to get better at guitar faster, because like YouTube, there's tons of skilled, experienced guitar teachers, but they filter out all the bad lessons, and each teacher has designated courses for you in order, so you don't have to scroll and search all over the place for good content. I've actually got a few courses down there myself as well, so you can take those. It's also cool because you might find yourself joining to learn guitar. Once you subscribe, you've got access to everything. So you might find yourself in no time learning completely different, unique skills to show off to people. I'm really excited Skillshare sponsored this video because it means I get to promote them with an offer that benefits you guys. And I love you guys and I love them. So the first thousand people to click the link in the description are going to get a free trial of the Skillshare premium membership. So try that out before the offer runs out. The last thing I want to mention is, like always, you can get all the resources for everything we used in this video by becoming a Patreon, and the link to that is in the description below. For this video, we've got all the chord progressions that we chose as our top 10, which should, which should give you a whole variety of different chord progressions for your songwriting. 
We've also gone through all the chords in them and laid out the fingering so that you can find a good way to play them. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon.